Hey friends, my name is Steve Guttenberg and I am the Audiophiliac. And today, well today it's gonna be a three part episode. And part one is about fantasy audio, ultra expensive systems and the sort of people that own them. And part two is what if, it's a what if, what if audio designers, if the cream of the crop of audio designers were paid like movie stars or rock stars or sports heroes. And part three is a very special audiophiliac viewer system of the day because it's going to be three different systems. So anyway, stick around for that. That comes at the end of the episode. Anyway, you know, I was thinking, I was talking to my buddy Herb Reichert, and we were talking about extreme audio, $100,000 plus systems. And I said, you know, I've never fantasized about owning one of those systems. It just it just doesn't work for me. It's just so extreme as to be off-putting to me. Now, I'm not saying they're not good or they don't sound amazing or that there's a point of diminishing returns. No, because none of those things are true. Well set up systems, $100,000 plus systems, well chosen, well set up in rooms with decent acoustics can sound freaking amazing way better than a really good ten or twenty thousand dollar system i've been there i've heard those i've sold them i know how good they can be so i'm not saying it's not because they're not good <laughs> no i'm saying it's just so much it just i don't know i don't feel it now i will say when i sold high-end audio for a living there were times where i would go into the store early before it opened so I could just sit and listen without being interrupted to extreme audio like Wilson X1s at, at that point, you know. And uh, there were Jadi amps and big Krell amps and amazing turntables and amazing AccuFace CD players, really, really good stuff. Well, probably closer to $200,000 systems that I was listening to. And I would do it for fun, you know, like a joyride sort of thing. But I never had that feeling if I could only figure out how to get there, you know. Never, never did it for me. And uh, why does it exist? Well, it exists for the rich. They live well. They live in beautiful homes and have beautiful cars and boats and estates, etc., etc., or apartments in New York City that aren't that huge. But anyway, and they and they want to own really, really nice things. <laughs> They own lots of nice things, and some of them are actually audiophiles or audiophiles enough that they want to own those systems. So that's why they exist, in case you were wondering. Now, they may not be for you or me, but remember, some of those systems, there is some trickle-down effect that the $100,000 speakers stuff winds up in $20,000 speakers and eventually $10,000 speakers. So there's that aspect to extreme audio. And, of course, a lot of that stuff eventually winds up on the used market, where it sells for a lot less, so it becomes potentially more and more affordable and attainable. So while it can be start out as fantasy, ultra, ultra, ultra audio, it eventually gets to the point where <laughs> people that have some money can actually buy them and enjoy them. So there's that. So yeah, I occasionally cover extreme audio, like that uh, big Sonus Faber Macintosh system I reviewed maybe six months ago. I will link to that directly below. And did the Mola Mola Tambaki DAC, which is $13,400 that I reviewed just a couple of weeks ago. But that DAC, the Mola Mola, is very, very expensive, but it is far from extreme. I mean, the big uh, DCS stack is probably closer to $100,000. Yeah, I mean, the Mola Mola was really high end, but it's far from the kind of extreme audio that I'm talking about you know, $200,000, $600,000 Wilson speakers. That's what I'm talking about when I say extreme audio. So Steve, right now, if you had to pick your final system, when you retire from being a reviewer, what would you actually keep? Well, I would say right now, and it's of course subject to change, but it would be the Klipsch Cornwall 4s. I just love those speakers. They are, they, they, they blow my mind every day. I love those speakers. As for electronics, the first watt uh, F7 and F8, I 
love, I love those amplifiers. I love Past Labs preamp. As for my turntable, well, the turntable is something that I actually own. So that part of my retirement system is already picked out. And it's an SME Model 15 with an SME 5 arm and an Ortofon Cadenza Blue cartridge. Phono preamp is a Vanden Hall Grail. So that's, that's already in. <laughs> that's not going anywhere. As for DACs, well, DACs change a lot, but right now it would probably be the Denifreps Terminator 2, which I have in for review, and I will cover that shortly. Oh, by the way, I also own uh, the Border Patrol DAC. That's one I bought a couple of years ago, and it's very old school kind of DAC. And when I'm in the mood for that kind of sound, I pull that out, and I will be re-reviewing it very shortly because I reviewed it a few years ago. Um, and of course, the Jay's Audio CD Transport this would be my CD transport and the Node 2 i streamer because I'm not that into streaming. I don't need a super high end streamer. But that's what I would buy or keep around for myself. So, part two of today's video is about it's a, also a fantasy. It's like, what if the, the best of the best, the best audio designers on the planet were paid? like rock stars or movie stars or sports stars that make tens of millions of dollars a year. What would that be like? You know, like what if uh, uh, Andrew Jones, which still hasn't announced where he's going next, let's say uh, Apple tapped him and said, you are probably the world's top speaker designer and we're we want to pay you uh, $50 million a year for a five-year contract to design the world's best speakers for Apple as if they actually wanted to do that. But let's just go with the fantasy, right? Or if Dan D'Agostino, formerly of Krell fame, you know, if Samsung said, Dan, we've admired your work for decades. We want to give you a, a, a multi-million dollar, multi-year contract to design amplifiers for our televisions that just blow away everybody else's sound from their TVs. Yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? Or Bruno Putzi, the man who designed the Mola Mola Tambaki, you know, similarly that some giant corporation said, yeah, Bruno, you're the man. We'll pay you tens of millions of dollars a year to design the best sounding DAX on the planet. So while these men are all legends, they are all at the peak of their craft, I get the feeling that none of them are what we would call rich. <laughs> they don't make tens of millions of dollars a year. They don't make millions of dollars a year. They just don't. It's not that kind of gig. They do it primarily because it's their passion to design great audio. I, I, you know, I don't know Bruno at all, but I do know Dan D'Agostino going back decades, and I know uh, Andrew from formerly of ELAC. We don't know where he's going yet. Um, and I just sense they just do it because they have to. It's their art. It's what they do. It's what they're here on planet Earth to do. But stardom and tens of millions of dollars uh, paychecks? No, it's not, not happening. <laughs> but I think they're fine with that. Anyway, it is now time for the Audiophiliac viewer system of the day. Actually, three systems of the day. First up is Dan. He lives in Chicago, Illinois. He has Magnapan LRS speakers. He is a former Magnapan Timpani 1D owner. He's using Emotiva SE8 subwoofers, a Blue Sound No 2i streamer, Odir Legato preamp, Odir Crescendo power amp, and he says, well, the turntable and CD player are not worth mentioning. <laughs> okay. Next up is Juan, and he lives in Venice, California, and this is his system. Turntable is a modified Riga P3 with a Dynavector 20X2L cartridge. Phono preamp is an Alnick H212. There's a Blue Sound Node 2i. Oh, those are so popular. DAC, Denifreps Ares 2. There's an Alnick L3000 tube transformer coupled preamp. Power amp is solid state. It's a Pass Labs X158. The speakers are Devor Fidelity Gibbon X. They are made right here in Brooklyn. Next, next we have Gerald's system. 
He lives in Germany near Cologne. He's dealing with space limitations. He doesn't really have a listening room. He calls it a listening corner in his tiny apartment. I know how that works. The speakers, we'll start with the speakers. They're Klipsch R41PMs. Uh, sub is a Klipsch R8SW. The turntable is a Microsecchi DQX500. It's 40 years old. It's the last survivor of a system from his younger days. The cartridge is an Ortofon 2M Red. Phono preamp is an Almia T3. The CD player is a Tangent 2. Thanks, guys. Okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. And I'm proud to announce that we just surpassed 197,000 subscribers to this channel. And if you're one of those 97, if you're one of those 197,000 people, thank you so much for being there. But if you have yet to subscribe, if you're still holding out, well, think about it. Would you please join us on this surge to 200,000 subscribers? I mean, we will go on after 200,000, but 200,000 is definitely a marker. So I would love for you to be part of that group. Speaking of love, I'd love you to check out my Patreon, which can be found at P-A-T reon.com slash audiophiliac and Patreon now accepts payment in dollars, pounds, and euros. What else? Well, I think, I think that's it. My work here is at last complete. So thank you again for watching and I really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.